Shalom Aleichem. Uh, welcome to our uh, program where we talk about history and occurrences that are relevant to us as Yidin, as Hasidim. And next week in Mirza Hashem, Tuesday is Yutes Kislev, the Rosh Hashanah of Hasidus, of Hasidus. I say that with all pride because the Brisker Rav, Reb Chaim Brisker, Reb Chaim Moise, and other Litvishek daily Yisrael felt very comfortable acknowledging that when they were asked, or rather when they were complained to, I believe in 1906 or 07, that the Lababach them have a new Rosh Hashanah. And we spoke about that last year, I believe, or two years ago, I don't recall. Anyway, I want to talk about Rabbi Yoel's Fabrengen, Rosh Hashanah night, Leil Yutes Kislev, so it would be, I guess, Monday night, this coming Monday night. <clears throat> but I want to talk about it <clears throat> in the context, not just of an experience that I was privileged to be at many times, but the broader implica impl implication of that experience. So, for the record, Yutes Kislev, of course, is the day when the Alter Rebbe, the Balatanya, was released from his imprisonment, and he was ratted on, he was informed by the Misnagdim. Today, the Rebbe has told us and tells us there's no Misnagdim, there's only Litvish, Lit Litvaks, but then there were misnagdim, people who opposed Hasidus vehemently. <clears throat> and they, they accused them of helping the Turkish government, that the Alter Rebbe is helping them, sending money to, to the Turks and to fight the Tsar and all of that. But of course, the way our Rabbeim saw it from the Alter Rebbe on, this was a decree from heaven, why he's publicizing such spiritual, mystical teachings, Hasidism, to the average man. And when the Alter Rebbe was vindicated, this proved that from on high that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, God Almighty, said, you're right in what you're doing, and not only should you continue teaching, but publicize it even more. And hence, the, the publicity and the teaching of Hasidus from 1799 on was much greater. And each generation with the, the, the next Rebbe that functioned as a Lubavitcher Rebbe, including our Rebbe, the seven generations, the Hasidus teachings have been brought to the average person with all its depth and intensity and experience. So this was an overall message that uh, for 200 years Chabad has been celebrating. Rabbi Yoel Fabrengt all night you test Kislev in Yeshiva, the Lubavitch Yeshiva in my time was on, it was on Ocean Parkway between H Avenue H and Avenue I. From 8 to 11, he fabrenged for the younger classes, and then technically we had to leave. And then he would fabreng for the, uh, the Shluchim, the Bacharim, from 11 till 7 in the morning. But of course, some of us, you know, snuck, snuck in and we didn't go to sleep, and we were privileged to be at those fabrengans. In addition to that, many people from the community, not mostly not Chabad people, came to Fabrengas from Borough Park and Williamsburg. And I recall, I recall people today who have entire Lubavitcher families coming <clears throat> to those Fabrengas. That night of Yutas Kislev, Rabbi Yol took a lot of mashke. But he took it, you know, in between talks and the gunim. So sitting from 8 till 7, which is... 11 hours, you know, it didn't, it didn't uh, knock him out completely, but he was open. He was open. I remember he cried a lot many times, and his nekuda, his theme that he focused on every year was the idea of bittel subservience to the Eberster and subservience to the Rebbe. That was the theme, that we have no independence outside of God. 
our entire independence is because of Hashem. And the Rebbe, the Tzaddik, as the Moshe, the intermediate between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Bnei Yisrael, filters that to us, and hence, we need to have that bitl, that subservience to him. To explain this, each year he used another story that he focused on. For example, one year he spoke about the fact that Hasidim would say, Mashiach will be a Masnagit. Right? What's Mashiach going to be? A Hasid or a Masnagit? So the Alter Rebbe's Hasidim said, there'll be a Masnagit. Why? Because he's a, if he's a Hasid, the Masnagit won't follow him. But if he's a Masnagit, the Hasidim will follow him anyway because they have that bitl, they have that subservience. But he, he took that apart and he explained it. What is a chassid? What is a masnagid? What, what does it mean within yourself? In Yiddish we say, it says, reich. It was rich. It was wealthy. It was gewaldic. Right? Another year I remember he spoke about I th- that, uh, that they say that when Mashiach will come, so it's in the, in the Gazette, it will be in the papers. I think he spoke about it one year. What does that mean? And so he took... He used, another year he mentioned the story of the, the Alter Rebbe wanting to leave the Maggid and he stayed because his, his um, shawl was left there. There's a famous Sicha, the, uh, the Friedrich Rebbe, I think, Beis Nissen, Tav Shenches, and uh, he took that apart. He really analyzed it. Sitting at those Fabrengens as an 18-year-old, 17, 18-year-old Docher student, and then later, older. And, the, and those that were even older, there must have been 150 people in the room. It created an ambiance, an ambiance of chassidishkeit, of chassidism. And that's the lesson that we need today. And that's what the shluchim and the chabad shuls and the rabbis and those that are not chabad that are making are going to make fabrengas next week on Yutes Kislev. You need to create an ambiance with the people Talking about ambiance, just historically, how do they celebrate Yutas Kislev in America in the 1910s, 20s, and 30s? Let me tell you a few places. When Rabbi Jacobson came, Rabbi Yisrael Jacobson came to America in 1926, the following Yutas Kislev, which was still 1926, Kislev is 1926, the president of the shul invited him to a restaurant because they sent out invitations and they invited all the shul members to celebrate Yutas Kislev with a great feast with meat and, and fish and drinks in a restaurant. I can't imagine how a kosher restaurant looked at that time, but for those days it was considered a luxury. Rabbi Jacobson says that he told the president he's not coming. He cannot get himself to celebrate Yutas Kislev in a restaurant. The next year, he says, after he already trained his congregants what it, what it means to be a chassid and all that, they, they, they agreed, actually not the next year, the next few years later, he says, they agreed to transfer the Yutas Kislev restaurant party, Fabrengen, meal, to his house. But just imagine how beautiful, not how, how beautiful that the feeling is. Oh, and this Yid said like this, the Yid who was the president was a, a great great son, great great grandson of Baruch Baruch Babreisker Ettinger, Chosser of the Alter Rebbe, and he said that he heard in his Aida's name that whoever will celebrate Yutes Kislev will see Nachas from his children and grandchildren of future generations. And that was very important to him and to others at the time, of course, because children were going away from Yiddishkeit. It was America, it was the melting pot, 1920s. So he wanted to make sure that, that, that he has a school, a remedy, so he made such a fabrengen in a restaurant. A simple Yid, who I think to begin with he wasn't from, and then he became more from as Rabbi Jacobson became the rabbi and taught him and was makar of him. And he came together from the Chabad lineage. What brought him close? The fact that he made you Kislev of a Fabrengen in a restaurant. And why? 
because his great great grandfather said that that's the way to, ha to protect your children from assimilating. Beautiful. Ah, it's not the way today we celebrate Yitzhak Kislev. But that's where they were coming from. And the lesson is outstanding. The lesson is that we need to celebrate this Kislev. Even if sometimes it's not exactly the way you think it should be, make turn it into a Yitzhak Kislev Fabrengen in a restaurant. In Kansas City, they celebrated in the 40s at the Chabad Shul, Nusach Shul. In Boston, all over, there were Yutes Kislev parties. I don't know, they didn't call them Fabrengs, they called them parties. In 1924, that Moshe Eliezer Kramer, who was the first president of Akudas Chsidi Chabad when it started in 1924, he called and, and he sent around a letter to all the Nusachari shuls in the greater New York tri-state area. They came from Passaic and they came from here, they came from there to have a, to make a, he was making a siyam, a shas. And there were 200 people, this is written in his memoirs, that was written by the Bianc of Mark. And there's details. And it's fascinating to read how how 1924, oh, and he says there, he says there that not like by others where they don't celebrate Gemara. We, Lababachach, see them, we dafke make a siyam ashas, and we learn Gemara. Rabbi Jacobson writes in his, in his zichroinahs, in his mem memoirs, that he didn't really know much chassidus. So for him, it was Nusa, you know, he was a, what's called a chassid of the Nusach, of the, of the ritual text, of the prayer, of the Siddur. Daving Nusach Ari. What did he learn most of the time? Nigla, Gemara. That's fine. That's fine. Halavai, we should learn Gemara and be a chassid shiit. Lots of Gemara. I don't mean... That's the way they celebrated... In the, in the Nusach Ari Shul at 184 Henry Street in Manhattan, the Lower East Side. What we see from all this is that Yutes Kislev is Shaykh, not just to, it's, it's relevant, and not just to Chabad, but to Nachlas HaKlal, it belongs to everybody. So, Rabbi Yisrael, we have five, we have several days left for Yutes Kislev, let's make a Shturim, the Rebbe always said the word Sturm, make lots of noise, make a storm. Storm the world that Yutas Kislev is coming. Wake up. The feeling should be, how can we go to sleep this coming Monday night? Whether you end up going to sleep or not, that's another, that's another issue. But your desire and will is, I must find myself out of Fabrengen. And not go away after an hour, but just sit and sit and sit. And if you don't like what the speaker is saying, Say l'chaim, sing achsidish in the again, say a vort, and make it happen. Don't be passive. Be active. Abe should help. The great yomtiv of Yutes Kislev, when we celebrate what HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us through chsidis, which is literally the lifeline to living life. Chsidis is the lifeline to living life. Without chsidis, it's a problem. Without chsidis, we, can, we, we are like dry fish without water. Fish without water. We need chsidis. Ebshel Helfen, with Yom Tev, Lashon HaTeva, Belimud HaChsidis, Vatakia HaChsidis, in the study of chsidis, in the ways and behaviors of Chassidus, that we should be zeicha to the Geula Shlema, with Mashiach's coming, we'll see the Alter Rebbe and all the Rabbeim, Yerushalayim, Yerakoydesh, Bemheira, Amen, Amen.